my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So I am back with another episode of my Sunday sewing catch up and this is episode 16. So as usual, I've got lots of different things that I'd like to share with you this week from things that I've been sewing um, to a sewing challenge, some fabric and patterns and what my plans are for next week with my sewing. So before I get started, I'll let you know what I'm wearing and I am wearing the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress, which is a firm favourite pattern of mine. I've made quite a few versions of this dress um, and it's made in this gorgeous, very autumnal in colour, um, tiger striped jersey. It's a cotton jersey fabric that I was given by Felicity Fabrics because I wrote a blog post about this. I'll link the blog post down below if you're interested in how I got on sewing up the pattern. So you can head over to their website and have a little read of my blog. Um, but that's what I'm wearing today. Um, we seem to have a little bit of autumnal sunshine at the moment, so it means that it's quite warm. And um, so I've been able to pop this on um, and yeah, it's warm enough for no cardigan and I haven't had to layer it up or anything like that, which is great. So I'm really pleased that I've been able to get a little bit more um, sort of wear out some of my summery garments, although this is quite autumnal in colour. I just love that colour. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I've mentioned before, I teach tiger class, so I love anything that's tiger print as well. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. If you haven't subscribed, please do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring, my bring out my next video. Um, I am in the process, I think I keep saying that in every video, I'm in the process of filming my August makes and my September makes and very soon I'll have to get on with filming my October makes by the time those two vlogs have come out. So there are other videos in the pipeline um, that will be coming out, so if you make sure that you're subscribed, you'll get notified of when I bring out those videos. Um, I wanted to say a massive thank you for all of the comments that I've had on my latest vlog, which was a pattern and fabric haul video. I filmed it in September and just got round to editing it and I published it yesterday. I've already had lots and lots of comments, so thank you so much for all of those. Lots of ideas and suggestions and um, because I asked for some help in regards to a denim jacket that I'd like to sew up using a black denim fabric that I got from Abercorn Fabrics. And then I also got some um, like rainbow carnival like trim and some pom pom trim and just some other bits and bobs. I think there was some rickrack that I shared as well. So I've had lots of wonderful suggestions and um, lots of people suggesting that I just stick to one trim, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, and I really appreciate all of your input and thoughts. I know that sometimes some of my ideas are a little bit out there and sometimes they're not to everybody's taste, but I do appreciate every single comment. So thank you so much for that. Lots of amazing suggestions and ideas. Um, in the video, I didn't share my inspiration for the denim jacket that I want to um, eventually get round to sewing up. And it, I think it's going to be a long term project. Um, I haven't got it cut out or even decided what trim I'm going to use yet. Um, but I'll pop some images in um, just to give you an idea of some of the sort of inspiration that I was using um, when planning the denim jacket. And it'll just give you an idea of what I was thinking with the pom-pom trim. I think lots of you commented saying just stick to one trim. And I agree. I don't think I would mix the two. In the video, I was umming and ahhing about whether to mix the two. But I think you're right. I think sticking to one um, really makes that shine um, and you, just using that base of a black denim I think will also really help to make that trim shine too. So I just want to say thank you for all your lovely comments and suggestions. So on a couple of my recent videos I've had some questions which has made me think and wonder whether I should film another Q&A. Um, so I wanted to give you the opportunity in the comments below to ask any questions and I think I'll round it up in a Q&A video. Um, I've had a couple of questions asked asking about um, garments in my wardrobe that I sewed a few years ago, do I still wear them? Um, what do I do with garments that don't fit anymore? Um, and yeah, just sort of similar questions around that theme. Um, do I manage to wear everything that's in my wardrobe? How do I approach planning um, and all that kind of thing? So I'll film another Q&A. So if you've got any burning questions, please pop them in the comments below. Um, I'll collate all of the questions and I'll film a Q&A so I can answer all of those. But thank you so much to anyone that likes or comments on my videos. I am working my way through the last few videos to reply to everybody so thank you so much for all of your comments and just interacting and coming back every time I publish a video I really do appreciate it so thank you. 
So I have got a list in front of me as usual of all the different things that I'd like to talk about. And the first thing um, was a recent blog post that I wrote for Felicity Fabric. So I shared a snippet of the fabric and I talked very um, sort of loosely around what I was planning to do with the fabric. So I have finished that make, I've written the blog post and it went live a few days ago. Again, I'll link that in the description below if you want to go and check it out. But it was a very autumnal make, so I'm just going to grab it. Um, so I got some of this gorgeous cotton dobby uh, fabric and it's in a terra, it's called terra, this colour. So it's like a terracotta colour and I love the crinkle texture of that cotton dobby with all the little dots all over it. And I turned this into the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. I'll put line drawings in because I haven't actually got the instructions printed. And I'm so thrilled with how this turn this has turned out. I've worn it quite a few times already. I've paired it with my Tilly in the Buttons bobby pinafore. Again, I'll put pictures in of anything that I talk about. Um, and also my um, Helen's Closet Black Yanta overalls. So I've paired it with both of those and I think it works really nicely. So I'm having lots of fun playing around with the styling of this blouse. I absolutely adore this pattern, so much so that I've cut out another blouse and I'm hoping to work on that across this week. Um, and I've also cut out the dress version too, using some fabric which I'll share. Um, but I love that sleeve detail. It's really gathered at the shoulder and then it's gathered into this gorgeous cuff detail at the bottom. And it's just really floaty, especially with this fabric and that texture. Now, one thing to say is the um, sleeve pattern piece is quite wide. So you need to make sure that you've got fabric that's wide enough. With this crinkle um, dobby fabric from Felicity Fabrics, it wasn't wide enough. So I ended up cutting the sleeve pattern on the cross grain, but it still works. It's still beautiful and drapey and poofy. So it hasn't impacted on the pattern and how that sits on me at all. Um, I used the buttons that was kindly given by Ethel and Joan that have got these gorgeous like gold and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you but gold and silver like specks all over them and they work so beautifully with this blouse. I absolutely adore it. It's finished with bias binding around the neckline and I think that's a really um, I think that's a really beautiful finish for the neckline um, and the sleeve is just my favourite thing about this pattern. Um, it's slightly curved on the hem as well. If I hold it up, you'll be able to see. So it's ever so slightly curved on the hem too. Um, so I'll link that blog post so you can go and check it out and have a little read about how I found that pattern. Um, but I absolutely adore the pattern and I've already cut out a couple of other versions too, which I'm really excited about sewing up. Um, something I'm trying to be really mindful of in my videos, and I'm really sorry, I know my last Sunday sewing catch up at points, you couldn't see my um, face when I was talking. So I'm trying really hard to make sure that when I'm talking, you can see my face. Um, and I think that's really important for anyone that also relies on being able to see um, like my mouth moving as well. And I know sometimes when the fabric goes across my face, um, it can mean that I'm slightly quieter. So I'm really sorry if that happened in the last not the last video, but the video before. I'm trying really hard to make sure that I don't cover up my face when I'm talking. So the next thing that I wanted to share with you was the things that I've been sewing up this week. Um, so the first thing is the Bella Loves floor dress, which I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. And in the last Sunday sewing catch up, I talked about the fact that I'd stitched the waistband incorrectly. So I accidentally followed the instructions for the top for the waistband. The rest of it came together really nicely, but I just made a big error with the waistband. So I did manage to unpick the, because I understitched the waistband seam as well. So I had to unpick that. I had to unpick all of the um, overlocking thread. Um, and then I'd also not aligned the inner and the outer waistband properly. So I had to unpick all of it. And then I managed to stitch it properly. And I'm really thrilled. It's finished. I'll put pictures in of me wearing the dress so you can see what it looks like. And I'm just going to grab it for you. So I've talked in great detail about this pattern, the Bella Loves floor dress. So I will link it in the description below. Um, but it is a pattern that you can sew up either as a top, which finishes sort of at your waist. It's got these gorgeous big ruffles down the front and down the back. And then you can also sew it into almost like a maxi style dress. And again, it's got these gorgeous ruffles down the front and back. And then the dress has got a ruffle on the bottom too. It's a wrap dress, so you tie it at your waist. Um, and I have sewn it using a fabric that I got as part of my Fabric Ambassador program um, with Abacan Fabrics. It's this gorgeous cotton poplin in like a um, watercolor 
pastel-y, they're sort of pastels, but sort of not, rainbow effect watercolour um, cotton fabric. So I'll hold it up in a second. I'm just going to flip back in my notebook to see if I can find some information about the pattern. So the Bella Loves pattern, as I said, you can do the dress version or the top version. And it comes in sizes 6 to 20, which are UK sizes, US sizes 2 to 16, and then European sizes 34 to 48. Um, it's a romantic wrap dress or crop top. Um, with these statement ruffles that become part of the shoulder detail. In terms of fabrics, they recommend lightweight woven fabrics like cotton linen blend, cotton lawn, poplin, voile, shirting fabric, broidery, anglaise. So a fabric that hasn't really got a huge amount of drape because then those ruffles really stand out. And on the fabric that I've chosen, those ruffles really are quite a statement ruffle. In terms of sizes, it also comes in different cup sizes. So you've got an AB cup, a C cup, a D cup. So for a size 6, a UK 6, an AB cup is a 31 and a half inch bust, a C cup is 32 and a half inch bust, and a D cup is 33 and a half inch bust. And then a waist measurement for a size 6 is a 23 and a half inch waist and then a 33 inch hip. And then for a UK size 20, for an AB cup, it's a 44 and a half inch bust. For a C cup, it's 45 and a half inch bust. And then for a D cup, it's 46 and a half inch bust. And then for a waist, it's 36 inches and hip, 46 inches. So I'm just going to grab the dress that I've made. I've just got it in front of me, but I will put pictures in of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like. Now, just to say, I know this is not everybody's cup of tea. I love bright colours. I know lots of people don't like bright, bright colours, um, but this just really made me smile when I was sewing it up. And when I tried it on, it just really made me smile as well. So just to say, I totally get that not everybody is going to love this make. Um, and that's mainly because of the fabric that I've, that I've chosen. So this is a fabric. Um, it's a watercolour cotton poplin. Um, and I just love those colours. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Now I'll hold up the back. This is what the back looks like. And it's got those gorgeous ruffles down the back too. And then the front has equally got those gorgeous ruffles. And then it's got this tie at the front as well. And then that crosses over. So you end up with this incredible ruffle on the front that becomes almost part of your um, sort of sleeve because it's sleeveless. Um, so it almost becomes part of the sleeve. The neckline and the... Um, sort of the, the armhole is finished with bias binding and I've chosen to use the same fabric. Um, just absolutely love it, I think it's really fun. And then the skirt has also got this beautiful ruffle on the bottom too. It's really, really fun, really bright and really colourful. Um, I think this is more of a summer make, if I'm honest, with the colours in that fabric. I am going to try and layer it with a top, a long sleeve top underneath and see what that looks like. Because I've seen this dress styled with a long sleeve top underneath and just see if I can get any more wear out of it. Um, it's also got inseam pockets. So I've got pockets there, which are lovely and deep as well. And then um, this is the... Um, waistband so I ended up unpicking it and just stitching it in. Now I also made an error with the waistband on the inside and I didn't have enough of the main fabric so I ended up using just a scrap of rainbow fabric but because it's on the inside it doesn't matter um, and the middle part of the waistband is using that fabric so I think it's absolutely fine. I don't think it matters that I didn't have the right fabric the inside of the waistband it's more that that waistband is in and it also matches up because on the waistband you also leave a little gap here you can just see my finger poking through you leave a little gap for the ties to thread through so it's really important that I made sure that that waistband matched up to make sure that when I was pulling the tie through um, it managed to go through at the right point as well but I'll pop pictures in so you can see what it looks like um, as I've said while sharing this make, I know that not everybody would enjoy wearing something like this. I know that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but for me, it really makes me smile. It makes me feel really good about myself. Um, I'm not quite sure where I would wear it to, but I think this will definitely be something that I can wear in the summertime when it's lovely and sunny and nice and warm. Um, the other thing with my clothes, I think... I just love wearing things that are bright and colourful, but I also love wearing things like that to school. So I think it's really important, particularly for the children that I teach, um, that I really promote the idea that, you know, um, it's important to be true to yourself and have fun with your clothes. Like your clothes can be an opportunity to share your personality as well. 
um, and I know that the children at school love seeing all of my bright and colourful clothes. They love seeing all of my themed clothes. So if I've got a t-shirt that's Hungry Caterpillar or a dress that's got space on, I've got dinosaur dress that I know that the children absolutely love. It sort of motivates them. Um, and I love wearing things that match whatever we're teaching that week because I think it really helps um, to sort of immerse myself in what I'm teaching the children too. Plus, it's really fun wearing something that's got dinosaurs all over it too. So this dress is a really fun dress and I really enjoyed sewing it up. And I'm looking forward to having a go at sewing this pattern up using something that's less bright and funky um, and perhaps maybe an autumnal fabric that I can then layer up and wear in the autumn winter as, as well with thick woolly tights and my um, ankle boots. So that's the first thing that I managed to get finished sewn up this week. And then I've had lots of fun sewing a couple of things because I've got some autumnal fabrics from Rainbow Fabrics and I've sewn up two of them already. So I'm just gonna grab them. The two other things that I've sewn up are using fabrics that I was going to share in this um, video because I like to talk about any fabrics that have arrived that week, but I've already sewn them up. So I can talk about the fabric, but also um, show you what I've turned them into. So the first one is this brushed cotton twill fabric. Um, which is like a mustardy colour and I got this from Rainbow Fabrics in their latest autumn winter fabric drop. Um, so it's this gorgeous like mustardy colour, I absolutely love it. Because it's a brushed twill, brushed cotton twill, it feels lovely and soft um, against my skin which is lovely. And I've turned this into a pair of Anna Allen Pomono pants. Um, and if I show you, I sort of adapted the waistband ever so slightly. So that is the waistband. What I've done is I've put a tiny little paper bag waist um, on the waistband. Um, and all I did for that was I sewed the trousers up as per instructions. And then I only had a narrower um, elastic for the waistband. And I knew that if I didn't stitch um, another little channel along the top, the elastic would move in the waistband too much. So before I inserted the elastic, um, what you have to do is you press the waistband down by about a centimetre and then you press it again and you've got little notches on your uh, sort of trousers which help you to know where you need to press them down. So I think this has been pressed down by about two inches and then you stitch it on the inside um, here leaving a little gap so that I, I can insert the elastic. Um, and then before I inserted the elastic, I then stitched another channel along the top, just a centimetre from the top of the waistband. And that's created this tiny weeny little uh, paper bag waist. And I just think it's really cute. And I will definitely do that on another pair of the Pomono pants because I think it's just another little feature and it's worked really, really well. Um, with the Pomono pattern, um, they just suggest that you put one patch pocket on the back. Um, but I like having two and I've done that on all of my Pomono pants. So I'm just going to hold it up so you can see what the back looks like. So I've just got the two patch pockets there, got the elasticated um, waistband and then that little paper bag waist as well. And then the front, um, no pockets on the front and that's what they look like. Um, and then I've done the tapered leg um, and then I've just got the hem at the bottom. Um, and then I sewed up a Tilly in the Buttons Freya top to go with these trousers, but also to go with some other things that I've got in my ward wardrobe using another fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. And this is a viscose jersey. I'm just checking. Um, it's called Ginger Rust Viscose Jersey. It's not quite as drapey as I thought it would be for a viscose. It feels more like a lightweight cotton jersey, if I'm honest. Um, but this is the print. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm really loving autumn colours at the moment. Autumn is one of my favourite seasons anyway because of the colours. Um, so it's got these flowers all over it. And I've just sewn up a um, sort of a funnel neck. Um, I think it's called a mock funnel neck um, neckband on a Freya jumper with long sleeves because I know that I need to be nice and cosy, especially if I'm wearing this to school. Um, so that's the top. It's got this mock neckband here which is sort of quite it stops like here um i'll put pictures in so you can see what it looks like on long sleeves and then it stops just at my hips so it's perfect because it gets tucked into things and um the frayer top is quite a fitted top so i think it goes really nicely with these trousers especially with that little paper bag waistband as well um so those are all the things that i've been sewing up this week the frayer top sews up so quickly it's quite a speedy make 
um, less than an hour really to cut it out and stitch it up together. I sewed it on my overlocker and then I just top stitched um, the neck band in place. You probably can't see, but I just used my faff machine to top stitch uh, the neck band and then to hem it and also hem the sleeves just with a zigzag stitch. Um, and then the Pomono pants are actually really speedy to sew up too. It's a bit fiddly um, sort of pressing and top stitching the pockets in place. Um, what I really like about the Pomono pants is there's no outer leg seam. So if I show you, that's the outer leg, there's no seam. You've just got the inner seam. Um, and what I normally do is I scoop a tiny bit out of the um, front crotch and the back crotch to make them fit me really nicely. I really like the fact that they're high waisted and that's really comfortable on me too. So I put a picture in of me wearing both the trousers and the top together so you can see what they look like. But I'm really pleased with both of those makes. I think they're going to add a huge amount to my wardrobe. So on to some fabrics that I've been buying. So I've got a couple of things. I bought a few remnant pieces from Sumi Sunshine and they had a discount code. Um, I think it might have been a week or a week and a half ago on their remnants and their sale fabric. So I've snapped up a couple of pieces and then a couple of pieces from Rainbow Fabrics, which I've shared already. But I've got a few other pieces to share with you now. Um, so I think I'll start with the Semi Sunshine fabrics. Um, and the first one from Semi Sunshine is this viscose twill. Now it was only, it was a remnant piece, so there was only 1.1 meters left of this. Um, but I really am just drawn to this color at the moment. This has been pre-washed um, and it's lovely and drapey because of the viscose content. So if I hold it up so you can see got a lovely amount of drape and movement. I'm not quite sure what to turn this into, but I think it's definitely going to become some kind of top. Um, I'm just not quite sure what pattern I'm going to turn it into yet. Um, but I just love that colour. I think it's going to go with quite a lot of things I've got in my wardrobe. And I love how it drapes and how that fabric moves as well. Um, so that's the first one. And then the second one, I just loved because I love tigers. Um, it was on the inset... And then the second fabric I got, because I absolutely love the tiger print and it's polka dots as well, which is lovely. It's on a white background, which is unusual for me, but I think this is going to um, be turned into some kind of blouse. I'm not, again, not quite sure what pattern. So if anyone's got any suggestions, please let me know. This could possibly become an Anna Allen Anthea blouse. Um, and I've been warned about that pattern that once you make one, you want to make a hundred of them because it's such a gorgeous pattern. And I can definitely sense that vibe. Um, so this is a Pigeon Wishes fabric and it's called Tiger Polka Dots Viscose. Now I only got a metre of this but it is quite wide and it is currently on sale on the Sony Sunshine website. So if they've still got any, I'll link it down below for you. Um, but this is the fabric. Absolutely beautiful. I just absolutely adore. One, how it moves. It drapes so beautifully. And then if I hold it up, you'll be able to see got some gorgeous like tigers all over it and then the black polka dots I think it's just a really unusual print um, and it's only when you get close enough that you actually start to spot the tigers I think it's so beautiful and I think it's going to make a really beautiful blouse and I think maybe the Anthea Allen um, the Anna Allen Anthea blouse would be perfect because I think those sleeves would look absolutely beautiful in that fabric so pretty um, and I think the children will love being able to spot the tigers as well if I wear it to school. I think I'd have to be careful, though, because it's got a white background. And then the other fabric that I got from Semi Sunshine was this boucle fabric. So it's a grey check boucle. And again, this was a remnant. I'm not quite sure what pattern I'm going to turn it into, but I think maybe a cotagon of some sort. I've got the cotagon pattern by um, so over it. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's the Jessie cotagon. If I'm correct, I'll put a picture in. Um, so this could become the Jessie cotagon because I use that pattern to sew up a different cotagon using fabric from Fabric Godmother and I wear it all the time um, and that's got a blue sort of navy background whereas this is grey and black so I think it will go with quite a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe. Um, there was only 1.3 metres of this because it was a remnant piece um, but I'll hold it up so you can see what it looks like. It's quite a heavyweight boot clay so I think this would be nice and cosy when the weather's a little bit chilly. Um, I think it would be really nice and snuggly um, it's really beautiful. I love those colours. Um, and again, grey and black is not something that I normally sew with very often. 
but I do have a gap in my wardrobe for a coatigan um, or jacket that's made in a darker fabric that's going to go with some of my makes that I've got. So I think this will go with quite a lot of things that I've already sewn up. Um, so if anyone's got any suggestions for a coatigan or what I can turn this bootle into, please do let me know. Um, I don't know if I'd need to line it because it does feel a bit, not itchy, but I don't know if that would bother me because of the inside of the uh, fabric, sort of it's a little bit bumpy. So I don't know of any coatigan patterns where you can line it. Um, so I'd be interested to get your thoughts on what you would turn this into. It's quite wide. Um, like I said, I've only got 1.3 metres. Um, but I wouldn't want a full length coat again. I think I'd be quite happy with something that maybe stopped at my hips or just below my bottom. Um, so please let me know if you've got any suggestions for that. Um, so that was the fabrics from Semi Sunshine. And do watch out over on their Instagram because quite often with their remnants, they'll share a discount code to be used just on their remnants, which means you get even more discount off the fabrics. And the remnants are always quite heavily discounted already. Um, so you can really get some lovely bargains from Semi Sunshine. And then the next set of fabrics I bought, I bought from Rainbow Fabrics in their latest fabric drop, which was Autumn Winter. They have still got some of these fabrics on their website, but I know quite a lot of them have sold out. I know the brushed twill um, has sold out. Um, I think the viscous jersey sold out as well. But if I can find any of the fabrics, I'll link them in the description so you can go and check them out. So I've already talked about the brushed twill and the viscose jersey. Um, and then I've got a couple of other fabrics to share with you. The other fabric that I got from Rainbow Fabrics is this green ribbed jersey. And I only got a metre of this because I know exactly what I'm going to turn it into. And that is the Tilly and the Buttons Freya um, with the mock neckband. I'm going to turn it into that jumper. Um, and it's this gorgeous stripey ribbed jersey. It's quite a lightweight jersey. Um, but I just love the green and the black. And then there's a little bit of mustard in there too. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, it's a really lovely pattern. Um, if I open it up, you'll be able to see it is quite a lightweight jersey. So I think it'd be great for the autumn and maybe a layering piece for winter when it's a little bit chilly. Um, it's got a really lovely amount of drape and a little bit of bounce to it as well. Um, and really good stretch. Um, so I think that'll be really comfortable and I think it'll work really nicely as the frayer top. I have to make sure that I'm really careful with my pattern matching of those stripes. And then it's got that texture to it because it's a rib jersey as well. So you can just about see that texture. Um, so that one I got a meter of. I'm not sure if they've got any left, but if they have, I'll link it down below for you. Um, and then I've got some blue corduroy. Um, and then I also got some bronze rust cord, which I'll share in a second. Both of these are going to become Helen's Closet Young to Overalls. Since I made my black pair, I have been living in them. They're so comfortable and they're absolutely perfect for work as well. Um, really comfortable to wear. I can move around in them. I can sit on the floor and I don't feel, you know, like squished in them or anything like that. They're super duper comfortable and really versatile. Um, so I've got blue cord and then I've got the rust cord. Um, and I think making a couple of pairs of yantas in different colours that are plain colours and just a block, I think will mean that they can go with a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe, like my jumpers and things. So it's this gorgeous, I think it's almost like a petrol blue colour. Absolutely beautiful cord. And I've got two metres of this one. Um, it has got a really nice amount of drape to it, actually. Um, I think they have still got some of the blue cord left. And then the other cord definitely sold out because it's this gorgeous autumnal colour. Um, and this is described as a bronze rust cord. Um, I just love that colour. So many things in my wardrobe I've got now with this beautiful rust colour. And I love getting it out in the autumn. Um, I think it's just such a lovely rich colour. And again, these are going to go with quite a lot of things that I've got in my wardrobe too. And I've got firm plans for both of those cords. They're definitely going to become a pair of the Helen's Closet Yanta overalls. Um, really comfortable pattern, fits me really nicely, um, really versatile. And it goes with lots of things that I've got in my wardrobe already, which is great. Um, and then the other fabrics I've already shared with you. So that was all of the things that I got from Rainbow Fabrics too. Um, so do go and check them out because I think that they've got some of those fabrics left over on their website. So the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about was a pattern that I've just bought. And it's a new pattern that's just been released by the lovely Anna, who is Kokowara Crafts over on Instagram. And she's also got a website too. And I think she's on Pinterest because I know that Anna shares 
sort of examples of her patterns here from Pinterest too. Um, she's been sharing sneak peeks of this pattern for ages and I've absolutely loved every little sneak peek. Um, and it is a new coat pattern and it's called the Nutmeg um, Trench and Jacket pattern. Um, so I have got notes written down in my book, so I am going to read off here because I haven't got the pattern printed and I have sent it off to get it printed as well. Um, so it's called the Nutmeg Trench and Jacket. So the trench is an A-shape knee length style jacket. Um, and then the jacket is a um, jacket that stops just below the hips and it's got a slightly closer fit. Both come with optional front patch pockets with flaps or inseam pockets for the trench. Um, the sleeves have got a slight gather at the crown and then a full gather at the bottom where you can either finish it with just a normal cuff or you can finish it with a sleeve placket and it's got this really cute bow detail as well. So there's a flat collar which is really easy to assemble with an optional ruffle on the outer curve of the collar. Um, it comes with belt and belt loops and then a front button placket. Um, it's not lined, so the seams are finished with bias binding. And Anna talks you through how to do that as well. So the instructions for Kokowara Crafts patterns are always exceptional. And I know with the nutmeg trench, even though I haven't sewn it up yet, I know that they will really hold your hand every step of the way. So I'm really excited about sewing this up. Anna has um, released this pattern in her extended size ranging so there's two size bandings a uk6 to uk24 or there's a uk18 to uk36 i'll put information in now and i'll link it down below for what the sizes sort of correlate to because i haven't written that down so apologies for that in terms of fabric recommendations oh, the other thing to say about the sizing is the uk6 to uk24 is a b cup sizing and then the UK 18 to UK 36 is a D cup sizing. In terms of fabric recommendations, Anna recommends medium weight fabrics like a denim, a twill, gabardine, canvas, flannel or oil skin. Or if you want a more relaxed style, then you can go with a tensil twill, linen or a medium weight chambray. I'm very excited about sewing this up. I'm going to try and sew up the trench and the jacket style. Um, I need to go through my fabric stash because I know that I've definitely got fabrics in my stash that I can use to make up both styles. Um, so, yeah, I think it just looks like a really beautiful trench and jacket pattern with some really cute details, especially like the ruffle around the collar and also the bow detail for the sleeve. It just adds a little bit of extra um, for a coat pattern. And um, it's aimed at confident beginners or um, so if that are really confident sewing lots of different things. Um, and like I said, the instructions really hold your hand every step of the way. So I think if you are a confident beginner, you'd definitely be able to tackle this pattern. And I'm really excited about um, giving it a try. I think it's going to be a really lovely, versatile pattern in my wardrobe. So thank you, Anna, for another beautiful looking pattern. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to share with you is a sewing challenge. So this is run by the lovely Lou, who is lula and stitch over on instagram i'll link her instagram page down below so you can go and check her out and when this popped up on my instagram feed i thought this is definitely a challenge i can get on board with i've got a couple of things in my wardrobe already that could definitely be entered into the um challenge and the beauty of this is you don't have to make anything new it can you can use things that you've already got in your wardrobe um, so the challenge is based around sewing something sweet. So based on or inspired by the textures or the colours or the taste of um, something sweet. So the hashtag for it is hashtag so sweet 21. You need to post a picture of a home sewn garment, outfit or accessory inspired by your favourite sweet thing. So it doesn't necessarily have to be sweet. It can be chocolate or it can be a pudding or dessert, but something sweet that has inspired you. And then um, tag Lula and Stitch, which is a lovely Lou, and then also use the hashtag um, so sweet 21 So it could be something that's new, so you can make something new for this challenge, or it could be something that you've made already. It could just be an accessory that you add to a, um, a me made outfit, or it could be an accessory that you've made that you add to your outfit too. But make sure that you share it over on Instagram and use the hashtag so sweet 21 and tag Lula and Stitch. I'll pop all the details down below as well if you're interested in taking part. But I've got a couple of things in my wardrobe that have definitely been inspired by sweets. So I'm going to dig those out. I've got a couple of garments that were inspired by um, one of my favourite sweet treats, which is the 
sweets called fruit salad. I'll pop a picture in so you can see what they look like, but they're one of my favourite type of sweets. So I've got a few dresses um, that I could dig out. I've got a couple of dresses that I've got um, fruit on, which was inspired by, I think I've got one that's got cherries on and one that's got strawberries on as well. So I could definitely get those out too. And I'm wondering now actually if my uh, Very Hungry Caterpillar dress um, could be counted as well as being inspired by a sweet treat because of all the lovely food the Hungry Caterpillar eats as well. It's running throughout the month of October and November and there are some prizes as well. So do head over and check out all of the details over on Instagram as well. Um, and then the final thing to say is some of the things that I'm hoping to start sewing up this week. So I've got a couple of things cut out. The first one is using this viscose jersey that I got from Rainbow Fabrics. So I've sewn the Freya top up, which is a Tilly and the Buttons pattern, but I've also cut out the Friday Pattern Company's Westcliff dress. So I have got the pattern here to show you. So it's this pattern, and what I'm going to turn it into is the shorter version, so the knee length version. So that's all cut out and ready to go. And then the other thing that I've got all cut out and ready to go, which I'm really excited about, because I think it's gonna go really well with my Pomono pants, which I've just sewn up is using this gorgeous cotton fabric, which is an embroidered cotton fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. Now I do blog for them, but I did buy this fabric. Um, so it's not part of a blog post for them. Um, it's got these gorgeous pun needle punch, I think it's called, polka dots all over it. And again, really lovely autumnal colors. Um, so I've cut this out for the Anna Allen Anthea blouse with the gorgeous voluminous sleeves. So I think this is going to work out really beautifully. And I think this will go, I think it will go really well with this underneath as Yanta's with that blouse underneath. Uh, possibly with this, it may go. I'm not sure if that navy goes with that petrol blue. Um, but I think it's definitely going to go so nicely with those trousers. So I'm really keen to get that sewn up this week. So I think I might prioritise sewing up this blouse um, just because I think it's going to go with so many other things that I've got in my wardrobe. So those are the only two things that I'm concentrating on this week, as well as all my acacia knickers that I still need to put um, knicker elastic in. So I've been doing a couple of those over the last week and then I've got more to do over the next couple of weeks as well because I cut out so many. Um, do let me know in the comments below what you're currently working on and if you've got any suggestions for some of the fabrics that I've shared today. Uh, let me know if you have bought the trench coat by Kokowawa Crafts and if you're planning to sew it up, what fabric you are going to be using. I'm going to dig out some of my fabrics and see if I can do some pairings of fabric to pattern um, and start planning um, what fabrics I'm going to use to sew up the different variations that I want to sew of the nutmeg trench and jacket pattern. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.